everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 10, so I'm going to be playing a little game here where I'm going to be picking a best book and a worst book for each month of the year. So for yesterday, Bookmas Day 9, I talked about all the 2020 new releases that I didn't get the chance to read that I really wish I had, so I'll have that link down below just in case you missed it, as well as the entire Bookmas playlist so you guys can get caught up. But today we are going to be talking about a best and a worst book, and I think this is such a fun idea. It's kind of like the best and worst for each shelf video that I did. It's gonna bug me, you can see too much white on that side. One second. Okay, there we go. We are back, sorry. But that was also an idea from one of you guys, and then one of you suggested this video when I was asking for bookmas ideas and I just loved it. There was also the idea of doing a best and a worst for each genre but that one I felt like might be a little bit more repetitive. I don't know what's happening with my hands here but so I decided to do the each month version because there's some months where I feel like I read like two books that I really loved, some months where I didn't really like the books. I think it's just going to be an interesting little switch up of things so I'm going to be looking on my phone here for the like what I read in a month. Thankfully we have good reads or else I definitely wouldn't remember. So I'll be starting with December actually because my reading year ends in November every year. I talk about that and I, you know, I know it's annoying but I'm sorry. But everything that I read in December of the previous year I count toward the next year's book miss. So December will be my first month of reads here. Good reads? is such a terrible app I have to say. Like I love the program, I love the service, but the actual like hardware of the app, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's always so slow and so glitchy for me. Like it's taking 12 years just to load the books that I have read. I feel like that's not that complicated. I don't know. I just feel like I have a million issues with Goodreads glitching. Like the app I guess is just really slow, but the actual like desktop website always has so many glitches for me, which is really annoying, but we're almost there. Okay, we made it. So in December, I read 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston, The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan, Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire, One Day in December by Josie Silver, 25 Days Till Christmas by Poppy Alexander. The Simple Wild for some reason is showing up here, but that I think I finished reading in November, so I'm not sure why that's there, so we'll just ignore that. Love and Other Train Wrecks by Leah Conan, and that was that. So immediately a couple are standing out to me as books that might be the best. Ten Blind Dates for one is one that I loved. Like, I just I really thoroughly enjoyed that book. However, we have One Day in December by Josie Silver, which was on my favorite books of the year list this year. If you watched that video, you know that. So that one is like, I don't know, it's like creeping up there. That one is definitely potential. But I did love Ten Blind Dates, so it's kind of hard to pick for that one. I will go with One Day in December though, because obviously like it's on my favorites of the year list. I love that one, but Ten Blind Dates is definitely a close second. Now, as far as least favorite goes, we have a couple of potential, like 12 Days of Dash and Lily, I gave a 2.5, but I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it. Then 25 Days Till Christmas by Poppy Alexander. That one, I, I didn't really like. I included that on my worst books of the year list. That one I gave a 2.5 though, because like that I just was expecting something different, which is where the struggle happened. So I also have, uh, where is it? Where did it go? I didn't see I gave two out of five stars. I think that's a little bit generous. That one's a nutcracker retelling that I was just kind of confused by. So that was also on my worst books of the year list. So I'm gonna go with Hidden Sea. So my best book of December was One Day in December by Josie Silver. And my worst book of December was Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. So moving on, January, I actually didn't technically read anything. I don't know if I just marked this wrong or whatever, what's happening here, but The Toll by Neil Schusterman, I apparently started on New Year's Day, but didn't finish it until February 3rd. So I don't think that's accurate. I don't really remember though. And then The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray, I started January 15th, but didn't finish until February 2nd as well, I guess. I don't know. So I'm just gonna skip January and move along to February. So in February, I read The Toll by Neil Schusterman, The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray, The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, All Your Twisted Secrets. Nope, we're going into March. I literally just got on a roll of reading there and did not pay attention to the actual dates. So we have The Flat Share, Bromance, Right Swipe, and The Toll. The Toll, I was kind of let down by. 
the right swipe I did enjoy but the bromance book club I really 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 loved I did really like that one I totally got invested in the relationship I loved that it was a pre-established relationship and the concept of like using the romance novels as guidebooks a bunch of these guys having a book club to do that is so fun to me so I'm gonna go with that one for my best book of Jan no February and for the worst book there's not really competition here it would have to be the flat share by Beth O'Leary I did also include this in my worst books of the year video but that one I was just so disappointed by it. I was so bored by it it was just it was a very strange experience because I really thought it was going to be something I would love so for February my best book of the month was the bromance book club by Lisa K Adams and my worst book of the month was the flat share by Beth O'Leary so both romances but one was just super let down so now getting to March this is where things get interesting. So All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban, American Royals by Catherine McGee, The Key to Happily Ever After by Tiff Marcello, Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire, Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon, The Night Country by Melissa Albert, Lovely War by Julie Berry. And then, oh I did actually read that one, Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett is also on there. So <laughs> we know where things get difficult here because I read Lovely War and Wolf by Wolf in the same month. So if you watched my top books of the year video then you know that that is literally Lovely War and then Wolf by Wolf are my top two favorite books of the year. And that that's so that's so hard. Like why? Why did I have to read them in the same month? But I like it honestly is neck and neck because I love these books both so much for such different reasons but I, I'm gonna go with the lovely war but also like I I love Wolf by Wolf so that is such a difficult decision but final answer is lovely war but also Wolf by Wolf. Ooh, I have a plan. I know what's gonna happen. Anyways okay so for the worst book of the month on the other hand I read some pretty like I enjoyed them like mostly 3.5 and 3.75 out of 5 stars this month but I did also read Come Tumbling Down by Sean and McGuire which I gave a 2.5 out of 5 stars. That one I always struggle with like that series I keep reading them because they're really short and I am interested in the concept but they never quite connect for me so that was also the case with this one so I will say that Come Tumbling Down is my worst book of the month. So my best book of March which wasn't a great month but it also was a great reading month so that's interesting but Lovely War by Julie Berry but also Wolf by Wolf but like you know. And then my worst book is Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire. So at the end of March things kind of you know fell apart. The world became a very very interesting place. So I didn't read all that much in April but I did still read some. So the books that I read in April are The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys, Songs of Innocence and Experience by William Blake, <laughs> I read a poetry collection, The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturb, translated by Lilith Thwaites. So that's three books. So obviously that's kind of a hard one but it also isn't necessarily a hard one. I didn't give a rating to William Blake just because like I feel like it seems weird to rate an entire poetry collection. I don't really like doing that so that has no rating so I mean we have two choices here so Fountains of Silence is going to be my best book of the month obviously because I mean I loved that one it was on my top books of the year list and then The Librarian of Auschwitz I super 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 disappointed by just the writing and like I don't know I will talk about that more in my surprises and disappointments video which is coming out I don't know when but it should be relatively soon but yeah that one was a major letdown so that will have to be my worst book of the month. So Fountains of Silence by Rudis Petties is my best book of April and The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturb translated by Lilith Thwaites was my worst book of April unfortunately. Now moving on to May. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams, Say You Still Love Me by K.A. Tucker, The Betrothed by Kira Cass, Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett, Time of Our Lives by Emily Wiberly, Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. What was happening? I read so much. Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. Actually I finished that one in June but uh, I'll, I'll include it in June because I did read a ton in May. What was happening there? Wow. Okay so we have a competition here really. So Clap When You Land I loved. It was amazing. I also really enjoyed Alex Approximately. Undercover Bromance was good. The Honey Don't List was also really enjoyable. 
but I think clap when you land has to get it it was on my top books of the year list so you probably knew that but it was just such a powerful story told in verse and definitely very different than a lot of other books that I've read because it has sisters who didn't know the other existed until their father dies so super cool especially because I mean not cool cool is the wrong word it was very I didn't want to say interesting again but interesting I guess is the only word that I can come up with but I liked the fact that one of them was living in Dominican Republic one was in New York so entirely different worlds and her writing is just so great. And then for the worst book it's not even really a competition if we're being honest because I read The Betrothed by Kira Cass then. So hmm, that one definitely oh yeah that is definitely my worst book of the month. So for my best book of the month of May I read Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo and my worst book for the month of May was The Betrothed by Kira Cass. So moving on to June. So Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds, Slay by Brittany Morris. I also read White Rage by Carol Anderson but I don't give a rating to nonfiction books that I'm reading so I will skip that one as well as White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. So next is Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn, The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta, Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker, Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Oseman, Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender, Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill, I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch, and that was it for the month. Okay, wow, once again, I read a ton in June. I don't know what's happening here, but ooh, this one's tough. So I really enjoyed Opposite of Always. Slay also really loved. I gave that one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Also like a love story. I super super loved, like really enjoyed that. The Black Flamingo, another one of my favorites from my favorites list, and Felix Ever After is also on my favorites list. So we have like a lot of runners runner-ups for my favorites list here, and we have some that like actually made the list. I'm going to have to go with for my favorite book Felix Ever After just because it is one that really stuck with me. The characters totally like made their way into my heart and they're still there and I just love them so so much so I do have to go with that one even though it is super tough to choose. And for a worst book I actually had like really good luck with what I read so oh I guess I'll go with my DNF which was I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch but I mean if I have to pick something different. I guess the one that I would go with, like they're all kind of four out of five star reads. I guess Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker, although that is a 3.5 out of five star read, so like not bad by any means. So my best book for the month of June was Felix Ever After by Casey Calendar, and my worst book for the month of June was Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker. I think there's another author, but it just doesn't show it there. Wendy Zhu, yes, so it just shows on the cover, but like on Goodreads it just has the one author's name. So now in July, I started off by rereading Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, so that happened, but those I won't count because I feel like it doesn't make sense. Uh, My Calamity Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. Beach Read by Emily Henry. Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Chirai Potra and Danielle Clayton. The Paper Girl of Paris by Jordan Taylor. And Dear Haiti Love Elaine by Micah Mulit and Maritza Mulit. So I really liked Almost American Girl. My Calamity Jane let me down, but I didn't like hate it by any means. Beach Read is gonna have to be my favorite. I feel like I kind of had like mediocre luck with July reading, but Beach Read I did super enjoy. Loved the storyline, loved the characters, loved that it was a romance with an emotional impact. I'm a sucker for that, but I did also really like Tiny Pretty Things, so that's a tough one. But The Paper Girl of Paris would have to be my least favorite, and it's not that I hate that book, but I think that it was more so like a younger end of YA and for someone who's more starting out with historical fiction. So my best book for the month of July is Beach Read by Emily Henry and my worst book for the month of July is The Paper Girl of Paris by Jordan Taylor. So now for August. So in August I read Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Wen, Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno, Under a Painted Sky by Stacey Lee, A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow, Maybe This Time by Casey West, Tweet Cute by Emma Lord, Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Actually, Get a Life Chloe Brown I finished in September, so I'll count that towards then. So maybe this time I feel like that will be my worst one. And it's not that I didn't like that one once again. I gave it a three out of five stars. It's just like this month I had a pretty good reading month once again. So maybe this time out of those books is kind of the most underwhelming of them. As far as a favorite goes though, I really like Summer of Salt and Love Boat Taipei, also under a painted sky. So I think 
out of those ones, I'm going to go with Love Boat Taipei. I'm kind of torn, but I will go with Love Boat Taipei as my best book of the month because it did, it definitely surprised me. I wasn't really sure what to expect from it. So my best book for the month of August was Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Wen, and my worst book for the month of August was Maybe This Time by Casey West. And now for September, Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, Blood for Blood by Ryan Groudon, Iron to Iron by Ryan Groudon, Iron Cast by Destiny Soria, House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, Shiny Broken Pieces by Sona Chiray Potra and Danielle Clayton, Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett, When We Were Magic by Sarah Gately, Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron, and Odd and True by Cat Winters. So once again I had a really big reading month in September. I, I really, okay, so Cinderella is Dead was great and Serious Moonlight also great. House of Salt and Sorrows, that one, really enjoyed, and then Blood for Blood. This was my plan, was to pick Blood for Blood. But then there's also House of Salt and Sorrows, which like, I did. I really liked it, but out of the two, I would have to say that Blood for Blood gets it as my best book of the month. Now as far as worst book goes, I think that that is going to have to go to When We Were Magic by Sarah Gailey. I was hoping to enjoy that one more, but I kind of just had too many issues with it, so. My best book for the month of September was Blood for Blood by Ryan Groden, and my worst book for the month of September was When We Were Magic by Sarah Gailey. And now for October, Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham, Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, Beetle in the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane, Long Way Down the Graphic Novel by Jason Reynolds, Seance Tea Party by Ramina Yi, The Witch Boy by Molly Ostertag, Sheets by Brenna Thumler, Coraline, hmm, Coraline by Neil Gaiman, I have a three out of five stars here, that's gonna change, The Witches by Roald Dahl, The Graveyard Book Graphic Novel Volumes 1 and 2 by Neil Gaiman, Witch Light by Jesse Zabarski, An Embarrassment of Witches by Sophie Goldstein, I think there's another author for this one too, but I can't. I can't see it. Uh, Jenna Jordan, Witchy by Ariel Slamet Reese, and The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, The King of Crows by Libba Bray, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones, Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, Master of One by Jada Jones. So I read a lot in October because I did that whole like month, not month long, <laughs> I did that whole uh, 48 hour readathon with graphic novels. So that's what most of those are. Coraline is going to have to be my worst book of the month. You know that already. So Coraline, oh my gosh, I still, I can't. Best book of the month is kind of hard, like Cemetery Boys, but I also really loved Seance Tea Party and The King of Crows. But mm, I'm gonna go with The Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I know there's not a the. Sometimes I just add a the in the beginning of a title, even if it's not there. But yeah, so Cemetery Boys. I just, I really loved that one. So my best book of the month of October was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, and my worst book for the month of October was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Tragic. And finally, November. So I actually, I haven't like finished reading all the books for November yet, but I'm just gonna, I'll pick anyways, so this might change. I might like pop in while editing to tell you that it has changed. But so far in November, I have read Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, Punching the Air by Ibi Zoboy and Yusuf Salam, The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill, The Tea Dragon Tapestry by Katie O'Neill, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, The Great Gatsby graphic novel by illustrated and adapted by Fred Fordham, and Anne of Green Gables graphic novel by Mariah Marsden. So I will definitely be reading four more books. I just don't know which ones or how I'll feel about them, obviously. I'm currently reading Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore and Well Met by Jen DeLuca. So I think like Bringing Down the Duke might kind of change things, but the Tea Dragon books I love. So those are like close for the best books, but Kingdom of the Wicked just, it got me, man. Like, I mean, Punching the Air is also like a really great one, but the romance and the angst in Kingdom of the Wicked, I have to give it the best book for that. I don't know, I didn't really read anything that I didn't really like in the month of November, at least not so far. So as of now, I will give it to The Great Gatsby, but it wasn't like, that wasn't bad by any means, but Oh well. So my best book for the month of November was Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, and my worst book was, I forget, I just said it, The Great, the, the, the great Gatsby by Fred Fordham. Okay, so that was every month. 
of the year broken down into my best and my worst book. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wanted to know more specifically about like what exactly I read this year, every single book, I will be doing a video later on in Bookmas showing you every single book that I read this year, even though I know I basically just said all the titles, but it'll be more of a fun video. And I will also be breaking down all of my stats and just my thoughts for the year. So stay tuned for that later on. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know, like this was kind of hard, but it was a lot of fun too. So I hope you liked it. But don't forget to join me tomorrow for Bookmas Day 11, where I'm going to be talking about the books that you guys said were the most hyped up, the most talked about books of 2020. It's a giant list. So that's gonna be fun. But don't forget to click that subscribe button so you won't miss any other videos that I'm posting for Bookmas, I will be posting a video every single day for the month of December. So you can also click that notification bell so you can be extra sure that you won't miss any. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video tomorrow. Bye! Mm -hmm.